Welcome back to our video series. In our previous session, we talked about how to onboard a switch, uh, Aruba CX switch, into Central 2.5.2. Now we want, I, I specifically wanted to cover how to handle templates with AOS CX. So the first thing we need to, need to do is navigate over to the templates. So we're going to go to our group that we created previously, the 6300-VSF. We're going to click on devices. We're going to click on switches. And once we see our, we can see our switches up. And we're going to click on config. Now from the configuration view, we can see our templates, where we would add our templates in, which I'll show in just a second. So there's two parts to this, two parts to our templates. There's the templates themselves and there's variables. So both of these make up how to create templates in central 2.5.2. So from this screen we can we would add our template here which I'll do in a, in a moment uh, and then from the variable screen we can create variables as you can see I have a list of variables here and then we can upload them we can actually download a sample file either with JSON or a CSV file and then we can upload that in whatever desired format that we want to use but the list of variables that we can add to the template can be uh, either JSON or CSV. Now part of a template is a common configuration for a group of devices which is the configuration group 6300 VSF. With those multiple devices, though, not every device is going to have the same configuration. I mean, of course, you don't want every device to have the same IP address because you'd have all kinds of havoc going on in the network. So we use variables to be able to add in different lines of configuration to the devices that where we would expect it to have different configuration, such as maybe uh, IP addresses, maybe specific ports that are connected up you know connected via uplinks uh, maybe the devices run a similar configuration but have different port counts so we can use variables to account for all that so with the variables there's different ways that we can handle the variables as I just mentioned we can use JSON which stands for JavaScript object notation or a CSV file which is comma separated values uh, the differences between the two if we look at it so here's an example of a CSV file everything's here in a nice little grid and we can enter our devices down the list uh, and then any what comes with this template are these variables that start out with a underscore that indicates that that variable is a system variable and is pre predefined in the template. If we want to add variables, we can then just keep adding columns here of the specific variables that we want to use. So in this case, we're assigning an IP gateway, a VLAN IP, so this would be our IP address, the switch would connect out to central. So this would be a different value for each switch that we would add into the sheet. Uh, we would indicate the port numbering that we want for our VSF links, as well as the SKU for the VSF member type. So those are, if we're going to modify the template, we need to make sure modified is changed from no to yes. Uh, by default, the serial number and MAC address will be populated when you, let's go back to the central screen, when you download a sample variables file, the serial, the MAC, and potentially the host name will all be filled out automatically for you. But as you add more devices in, these would all have different values. So each, each template, each CSV file, must have the serial number, the MAC address, and the host name in this modified command. Uh, if you're running a stack, it will populate the sysstack command. Uh, these other variables would be for additional purposes, uh, you know, for additional settings that we would want to configure within the template. The JSON file you know similar values but it's just a different format if you're familiar with JSON programming or Ansible uh, we would see that the format is laid out differently so if you have a programming mind or want to use this in a automated fashion you could use the JSON template as a way to 
import the values into central. So those are the differences between the two ways that we can handle variables in central. It's important to note this variable list that I'm showing is for a two member stack. So you don't really need to add the second member in because the way VSF it works in CX, you'll already have the stack provisioned. So you just need to bring the first switch into central, but you have to have the subscription applied to the second switch, but it'll automatically show up as a stack. Once we're finished with our desired variables, we can upload the variables file here into central and then select the file and it will automatically upload and populate this list of variables in the variable list here. So then we need to make sure those match the template. So now that we have our variables uploaded, we need to create a template. So let's go to the template screen and then we're going to click, uh, click the add screen here and we'll give this template name the same as the group name. We want to specify the device type as Aruba CX. The model, this will be 6300s. If we want to get specific to the group, the template group, we can specify a specific SKU for that. Uh, for this purpose, it doesn't matter, so we're just going to leave it all. And if we wanted to restrict the version of firmware, we can do that as well. But we'll leave that as all. And then we click Next, and then we can import our configuration. Uh, it's one thing to note, one thing we're looking at uh, with the way CX uh, is currently designed, we have password requirements to uh, fulfill a California law, and so we have to enter a password in uh, before we configure the device. And because of that, we can't currently import the configuration from the switch. So what we'll have to do is build a golden template first, and then we can paste it in here. And as new switches come in, we can automatically uh, push the template to those. So I already have my golden template configured. So I'm going to copy that into the template window. Now notice in the template here, I have my variables set up. So basically here I have my host name will be a variable. So if I had 100 devices, you know, I would expect to have 100 uh, rows of host names configured in my CSV file. I variableized the VSF members because they might have different uh, port counts, and so I would need to specify that, that in the variables. So the type is the SKU that we saw in the CSV file. Uh, we can also use if and else statements, if and end if statements in the template logic. So if this VSF uh, if this VSF member contains link one, then it would add in the link one value that we have specified in the template and then end from there. If it also has a VSF member link two, then it would add the link two uh, configuration into that. Because we have a two member stack, only one VSF link is supported, but you can have multiple ports for redundancy. And so in this case, it would just execute to here and then enter that into this configuration. Uh, same thing for member two. Uh, if there's a VSF link for member two, it would add in the, the member two link and then end the logic. So that's one way of how variables and logic work within a template. And so that's what it looks like, uh, how it's configured into central. So once we're done with that, we can save the template. And then the set template is automatically pushed to the switch as long as the, you know, once the, once we first configure the first switch into the group, so we first have to manually paste this template in. Once that first switch is configured, as other switches come online, the template will automatically push to them. One thing to note is that there's a discrepancy between the password between the CX switch and central. So for now, you have to put the password in central as plain text. Not to worry, though, because that only has to deal with the template to the switch. The communication between the switch and central or your computer in central is all over SSL and is encrypted. 
So then once we've saved that, we can push the template to the switch, and then we can go to Configuration Audit. And this is already pushed, but if we had any errors, we would see that. So let's uh, let's go back and make an error. Let's change the variables here so that we can show that the switch, uh, that central part processes all those variables that we've uploaded. So I'm going to take one of the percent signs in, so I'm going to artificially put an error into this, and I'm going to save it. And when I do that, the system is going to push that template and it's going to uh, either list errors here or list failed or pending changes here. So what I can do is I can refresh the screen and then it'll show any failed or pending errors on the device. So it shows here we have a failed or pending change so then I can click on the link and I can view the config difference and it says uh, the host name is not compliant with RFC 1123. So I know that that's working. I know that it's parsing through the variables. So what I can do is I can go back to templates. Whoops. Back to templates here. Click on the edit. And I can go back and add that parentheses or that percentage sign back into the template. Then I will click Save, and I can go back to Configuration Audit, and we can see there's a pending change, so I'll view the difference. So now we see there's no more error messages, so right now it's pending, so it's being pushed uh, via the API to the switch. So I can close it, and after a while, we can check it again. After a while, this will be zero. So if I change the tab, go back to Configuration Audit, and we can see it's zero. So the change has been change that I've made has been saved. So now, if we go back to the template, so we know that this is good now. We know that we have it saved onto the switch and that the template push was successful. So failed or pending changes will show here. So if you, even if it's pending, you'll log it, you'll click the link, log into it, and if there's no error messages, you just see the running config, you'll know that it's, it's pending the push. And then once it's uh, completely pushed, it will either show there's one device, click on the link and it'll show an error, or if it passed the uh, template processing, it will just show the running. It'll just show that there's no uh, no devices that have failed or are pending changes. If there are any errors specific to the template, it'll show here, and then you can click on the link and view any template errors with that. So that's a quick uh, overview of how to handle templates and some of the components of templates with uh, Aruba CX switching and Central. The last thing I wanted to cover now that we've uh, understood templates is firmware, what we can do with firmware on our switch. So let's go here to the firmware tab at the lower left and we're going to click on switches. So we see our switches in there and uh, we have a recommended version. Uh, the recommended version it says it's 10.4.2000 and it should be at least 10.5.1000. Uh, I'm running a uh, pre-release build of 10.5.0.0.1.0. But so the firmware will tell you what firmware is recommended for the switch to be on, and uh, how you can. Uh, you know, then you have to take the steps to upgrade to that. So one way we can do that is we can select upgrade all, and that brings up the upgrade switch firmware context. Uh, we can select if you know if we're going to have multiple types of switches in this. We can select uh, for AOS switch what we'd want to have it updated to. So for that, we'll do the latest 16.10. Uh, for CX, we can go to the latest version, which is 10.5.0.0.1. Then we can check to auto reboot. Uh, then what we can do, we can either upgrade now or schedule a later date to do it as. We can select uh, what date and time we want to 
have that firmware upgrade and then we can click schedule. If we wanted to do it now, we can do now and it would upgrade the uh, firmware on the device to the appropriate firmware. The other thing we can do is set a compliance for that. So for our group, if we want all versions to be on 10.5.1, we can set that and, and ten, say for AOS Switch 16.10.9, we can set uh, firmware compliance and schedule the compliance policy so that groups uh, have to enforce that policy and then at a specific uh, schedule all those devices will be upgraded to the appropriate and recommended firmware. So that's what we can do with firmware on that. So thanks for tuning into this video. Uh, in the next video we will talk about monitoring and reporting.